much. Uh, Will and Ivo, are you ready? Yeah, I think so. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. We are the Steampunk Pavilion Design Team. My name is Sumin Han. Today, I'm going to present our project together with Guilin, Yan, and uh, Ivo Pantic. And I would like to especially acknowledge our design team. Uh, this pavilion is produced by this joint force of young startups, Hologram from Melbourne, Igor from London, and myself from LA. An extremely enthusiastic group of people interested in pushing the boundaries of architectural practice. And I feel very grateful and lucky to be able to be part of this team. Um, Firstly, uh, thank you very much uh, for Digital Futures Committee for selecting our project. We are very honored to receive this award. The Steampunk Pavilion is the winning entry of the 20, uh, 2019 Tallinn Architecture Biennale Installation Competition. The competition has his historically been interested in engaging with the local timber industry in Estonia. For instance, Geoessence proposal in 2009, uh, 2019 and Parts proposal in 2015. And our proposal Steampunk combines the traditional craft of steam bending timber with high tech holographic design and con construction. When our proposal got pro pro uh, published online on Arc Daily, a lot of people didn't believe that this could be built. Uh, steam bending is an existing crafting method. Traditionally, steam bending requires expensive one or two part molds to produce precise parts. Molds for non planar parts become very complex. To overcome this problem, we propose an adaptable formwork system to uh, for double curved timber stripes using a holographic guide generated in real time for this model. At the competition stage, we had only done very simple steam bending tests with this system. But despite this, a very supportive jury trusted that we could pull this project off, which gave us a lot of confidence. Since the winning of the competition, we started building a series of prototypes. The first prototype was built during a two days workshop at Temple University led by our teammate, Guel. Uh, with support from uh, James Patsy, Andrew Witt, Chris McAdam, and Tim Rosterholz, uh, we developed a floor-mounted uh, formwork system for steam bending full-size timber boards. In this first prototype, we had a lot of problems dealing with uh, spring back in material, and the large number of relatively small parts meant that we had a lot of connections between back and a lot of accumulative errors as a result. So after this test, we went on to build a second prototype. And the second prototype was developed with Ryan Hughes and uh, Dagmar Reinhardt at Aarhus University of Architecture in June. Uh, to eliminate the errors at joints, we developed the system to steam bedding parts after they had been connected. And finally, this prototype proves that large-scale steam bent timber structures could be constructed accurately enough to deliver our competition proposal. And Igor will take over to explain uh, further. So understanding that we would be fabricating parts entirely by hand and by eye basically allowed us to rethink the need for precision in the digital models. <clears throat> parts in the design were First, very quickly and approximately modeled with intersections or no fabrication constraints. Uh, these dirty models uh, were... Is the video going? Yes. Yeah. So these dirty digital models were used as input for physics simulations, which approximated material and fabrication constraints within the tolerance that we could fabricate. And the critical constraint was basically ensuring that all parts unrolled to close to straight geometries so they could be fabricated from linear stock material. This allowed us to simplify our production chain, reduce fabrication time and complexity, and allow for design changes at any point during the construction. So we were able to use cheap and knotty timber without wasting the material as we could visualize each part, how would it be done under stress and lay the timber accordingly. After that, each board is placed in a plastic bag, which would 
act as a steaming chamber and, and using the bag as a steamer would allow us to form the parts while they were being steamed, basically increasing our work time up to around five minutes and reducing the chance of breakage during the bending process. Um, likewise, we basically eliminated the need to design and fabricate the molds. Instead, formwork was assembled on the fly using cheap scrap timber uh, set out using the holographic model of a timber strip as the basically only fabrication information. Uh, so this had kind of an effect of, of distributing the skills because anyone who's participating in the fabrication process, regardless of the previous experience, could see the required shape and part and they could lay out the formwork or guide during the bending. As you can see on this video of, of the bending process where basically one person is wearing the HoloLens and guiding the rest of the group how to bend the piece. Um, the steel brackets were also designed to be fabricated from stock 40 millimeter stainless steel flat bars, eliminating the need for laser cutting or prefabrication. Uh, these brackets are all unique, consisting of up to 30 non-planar bands, and together with the timber, uh, they form a composite shell. So um, a, a choreographic interface allows fabrication to select parts and steps through the sequence of bands. Um, so basically the geometries are displayed in correct position on an analog bar bender. The holographic guide shows exactly how to angle the part prior to the bending and then the correct shape of the part after the bending. So basically no drawings were required and there was no need to leave the fabrication environment to check anything on the screen or so on. So holographic models enabled us to completely eliminate 2D drawings from the design and construction process of the pavilion. So, and by precisely positioning these holographic models directly within the construction site, we're able to visualize installation sequences of strips and brackets, as well as the completed chunks of the pavilion. And the ability for anyone to view this holographic model of the finished state of the construction at any time allowed handmade flimsy, flexible parts to be reliably installed without the need for expensive templates, 3D scans or measurements. The weight of the timber parts would easily elastically deform them out of shape, even on the ground. And so it was critical to work from a holographic model to identify the correct shape and orientation of these 12 meter long strips during their installation. We also expected the structure to slump under self weight. Um, and so reinforcing brackets were designed from the as built conditions in a kind of hybrid approach to designing and making. Uh, we digitized the timber strips that had already been constructed and using paper markers that were tracked with the HoloLens. And then these digitized geometries were streamed to a parametric model that could automatically generate connecting parts in real time. Uh, simultaneously, somebody is on site with an analog bar bender making these parts and then using the same holographic model to go back and install them. The idea of augmented analog tools um, with the precision of holographic guides enabled very low cost, fast and flexible fabrication of complex parts. But unlike traditional handcraft, working with hand tools augmented with step by step holographic fabrication information enabled very complex parts to be fabricated by anyone, as Igor mentioned, regardless of their prior knowledge, skill, or expertise. Suddenly anyone can participate in any fabrication process, including quality control checks of the precision of fabricated parts. And we found ourselves like suddenly able to build wildly complex things at very, very low risk because there was essentially um, very low chance of nobody identifying a mistake if it was made. The language of the pavilion expresses um, how it was made. It shows the innate flexibility of the timber material and demonstrates the enormous capacity for variation facilitated by the simplicity of the hand fabrication process. The composite structural system also facilitates a lot of tectonic freedom. The structure sometimes behaves as a wall or a surface, sometimes as a thicket of strips that are lashed together to function as a column. And the twisting of these strips is not only a direct result of the plank being formed into a 3D curve, but also generates complex play with light, shadow and views through the structure. We hope this project's provocation in the age of what is now ubiquitous digital design and production. 
that this is a new kind of primitive hut. It's an expression of simple materials simply formed uh, to materialize a vision for what we think is a newly possible architecture. It takes a polemical position towards automation, precision and repeatability in favor of intuition, the nuanced of handcraft and adaptability. And we're unapologetically romantic in this aspiration to the Gothic and the idea of the architect as a master builder facilitated through the single point of truth of the holographic design model. And we really, really appreciate everybody's support that made this possible, specifically to our whole team, including Cam, Sean, Hanjun, Aisha, Karim and Nick. Karim just volunteered for two months to build this project, incredible guy. To James, Solly and Format Engineers, to the jury, especially to Philippe Bloch. Uh, Aredi Marcopolo seems to be on the jury twice and Mikel Tur. To the tab organizers and to Jills for curating the competition, to our sponsors, to our partners, and the biggest thanks to all of the uh, volunteers who traveled around the world to help us out with the project. So we appreciate it. Great, thank you.